Unreal Engine is really cool and it's useful for a lot of different things, not just game development and certainly not just VR development, even though that's primarily what I focus on on this channel. But it's also useful for a lot of other things such as film. And so for this tutorial, I actually decided to jump in and try seeing how simple it was to set up a camera, a green screen, and actually drop myself in a virtual environment. And it was surprisingly easy. Let me show you just what it ended up looking like. What do you think? Pretty neat, right? Well, this isn't just like some background that I have in OBS. Well, that could be possible. What this actually is, is this is a capture being captured in Unreal Engine. And all of this background is actually being handled in Unreal Engine. Watch, I can prove it to you right now, ready? Now I'm moving around the background with just a Vive tracker. And if this were actually attached to the camera that I'm using, I could actually use it and move around anywhere within the space and look a little bit more like I'm actually fitting in with it. Let me go and put that back real quick. So in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how you can actually get a camera capture from most, if not all devices, I'll talk about that a little bit more, and actually use it in Unreal Engine and actually have it as part of your background and have it so that way it actually fits a little bit better with part of your background. But before we jump to that, if you enjoyed this video and want to see more just like this one, be sure to like and subscribe button down below. And with that, let's jump right into the video. Now let's start with what you're actually going to need. First off, you're going to need a camera. Now, I'm obviously not using this one because it's in my hands, but this is what I would normally use. What I'm actually using here is just a simple webcam. And the reason I'm using that instead of something like this is you need some way to actually bring your camera into Unreal Engine, meaning you have to have some sort of connection to your computer. Now, while I do have capture cards that potentially could bring a camera like this in, this camera actually would not work uh, with Unreal Engine. I'll talk about that a little bit more as we get into the video, but you're going to want some kind of camera that can actually hook up to your computer so you can actually grab that footage in Unreal Engine. In addition to that, preferably you're going to want some way to actually hook up a tracker as well as actually have a tracker to use. Now I have here one of my three Vive trackers. The other one's currently on the camera. But what you're going to want is some sort of tracker if you want to be able to move your camera around in the space with you. In addition to that, you would preferably want some way to actually hook up this tracker to the camera itself. Now that camera has a way for me to hook up this tracker, but like I said, I wasn't able to use this camera, so right now I'm using a webcam for this entire capture here. Now the last thing you're going to obviously need is you're going to need some kind of green screen. Now it's chroma keyed out behind me, but I have a green screen right here. My hand is actually pressed up against it. Now it's not a very big green screen. In fact, you might actually see my hand clipping out as I go out along the sides further out beyond where my green screen is. And I'll be showing you as well how you can crop the footage in case you need to, in case your green screen does not take up the entire width of your camera. It also doesn't take up the entire height to my, my green screen ends about right there. With that, you have everything that you need in order to actually begin getting camera footage in Unreal Engine, as well as actually tracking it around with the tracker. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. First thing you're gonna to wanna to do is you're going to want to first jump into project settings, scroll down to the Windows platform settings, and we wanna set default RHI to DirectX 11. Now this is actually very important and part of the reason why I said I wasn't able to get my camera working. Now if you're using a later on version of Unreal Engine 5 or some earlier versions of Unreal Engine 426 you might not run into this issue but in the current version of Unreal Engine 5 DirectX 12 and the default do not seem to detect most cameras that you can plug into your into your computer. That's part of the reason why I had to revert to a webcam for this specific tutorial. DirectX 12, as well as the default RHI settings, both did not allow for me to use either my capture card or this webcam. I actually had to revert it back to DirectX 11. Now, there's no guarantee that this is ever going to be fixed or if this is ever going to change at any point in the future, but this was a project setting that was required. 
Now, in some earlier versions of Unreal Engine 4, 4.26, I believe, being one of them, uh, you don't need to bother changing any of these kinds of settings. This should all work a lot better in some earlier versions of Unreal Engine 4. In addition to this, you're also going to want to jump into the plugins and you want to make sure that Steam VR is enabled. Reason for this is this is going to give us access to the trackers as a motion source that we can use with the motion controller. And that's how we're going to be able to move our camera around in the play space. In addition to that, I would also recommend disabling OpenXR. Now, I say you may want to consider that because this may not be an issue for you. When I was actually setting up this part of the tutorial, this part that you're seeing with my background, I didn't have to disable OpenXR. However, I found that that happened yesterday and when I came to record today, OpenXR was actually causing me some issues and I had to disable that in order to actually get my trackers to work correctly. So you may have to disable OpenXR, you may be able to leave it enabled, but just be worried that that may be something you may need to disable if your trackers just don't start working when we get to actually tracking our camera movements. Once this is all done, Unreal Engine should prompt you for a restart. So go ahead and restart Unreal Engine. And then once that's done, you can go ahead and open it back up and we can go ahead and get started on actually capturing our camera. Once Unreal Engine is restarted, now we can go ahead and start on grabbing our camera's source. To do this, we're going to go ahead and create a new folder called Media. Then in here, I'm going to create a new media player asset. When you go to create this media player, you'll also get this prompt that allows for you to create a texture. Go ahead and hit that checkbox to make sure that you get a texture asset that binds itself to this media player asset. Once you have this media player asset open, go ahead and go up to the top left where you should see a little drop down icon. And in here is where you can actually grab your camera's source. In here, you can go ahead and go down to video and then you should see a list of various cameras that you may have connected to your computer. In this case, Mine is right here. It's the simple webcam that we're going to be using here. At this point, I also like to just run in front of the camera or have some kind of motion happen in front of the camera just to make sure that all of the capture is working correctly. And that's going to continue updating as we go along. Now, if your camera doesn't work, the first thing that I would suggest trying is actually go down to the bottom right here. There's actually a section where you can set up what decoder Unreal Engine is using, as well as various different types of tracks and video outputs that you can get for from your camera source. Sometimes Unreal Engine does not pick this up correctly and you need to actually manually go in and set the decoder, set the track and so on and so forth. Now, if you'll recall, when we created that media player asset, we actually hit a checkbox that would actually give us a texture that we could use in materials. So let's go ahead and open that up just to make sure that everything is working correctly. I usually like to just, again, jump in front of the camera or have some kind of motion in front of the camera just to make sure that everything is still working fine. In this case, everything is working just fine, just as we would expect it to. So assuming that's all good, we can go and close down that texture and then head back into the content browser. Here we want to go ahead and right click on that texture and we want to convert this texture into a material. Once we have this material open, we can go ahead and dis disconnect that base color. We're not going to be using base color for this example. However, you certainly can if you would like. Once we have that all in place, go ahead and click on the material itself. And we want to make sure that this has a blend mode of translucent. Once that's done, next thing we're going to do is we want to go ahead and grab the RGB value from our texture. We want to pass that into a chroma keyer. Once we get this chroma keyer, keyer you can see we have both an emissive color as well as a opacity output. These will both be connected to their corresponding nodes in the material graph itself. With that, our material is now ready to start moving our background. However, you may notice that it's not actually doing anything yet. So let's go ahead and fix that. Go ahead and close down that material, then back in the content browser, right click on the material itself and create a material instance and open that up. If we look in the material instance, here we should see that we're able to modify various values that affect how we're able to both crop the sides of our footage as well as chroma key out the green screen background. 
So I'm going to run through this. I'm going to go and crop off the sides. I'm going to go and change that chroma key color so that way it matches the color of my background. And I'm also going to go ahead and make just a few adjustments just to make sure it's a little bit more cleaned up. Now in the preview, you likely won't actually see any adjustments if you were to jump in front of the camera itself. So if you want to actually go and make sure that your chroma key values are still all working and that you can still jump in front of your green screen as you would expect, go ahead and jump back into the level, drop in a plane, and then go and give that plane the material instance you just created. Assuming everything works correctly, when you jump back in front of your camera, you should now see yourself standing in front of the camera with nothing else behind you, just as you would expect. Assuming everything is set up correctly, we can go and delete that plane. And now finally, we need to actually get our camera set up. Our camera is going to be pretty easy. In order to do this, I'm going to again create a new folder called Blueprints. And in here, I'm going to create a Blueprint class of type Pawn. Now, making sure that's Pawn is pretty important since we want to be able to actually possess the camera that we're using. And by having this as a Pawn, we're able to actually possess it and we're actually able to use this camera in engine. Once you have this pawn created, go ahead and open it up. And in the pawn, first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to attach a motion controller component. Once we have our motion controller set up, we now need to bind it to a Vive tracker. This is actually pretty easy to do. Go and scroll down in the details panel down to motion source. And in here, you should find a bunch of tracker values. In here, I'm going to be using tracker waste because that's the name of my current tracker. If you don't know the name of your tracker, go ahead and open up your tracker settings in Steam VR. Then, in here, you should be able to see the various names you have your tracker as. As you can see, mine is this first one right here. And I can actually tell this as well because it's got a little green dot next to the tracker's name. And the reason for this is because this tracker is the only one that's actually turned on at the moment. The other two have red dots because both of those ones are currently off. Once you have that tracker set up, next thing you have to do is you have to go and attach a camera component. Now, as you might expect, our tracker is not going to be automatically set correctly to our camera's orientation. So what I usually prefer to do is go ahead and face my camera up, and then I usually need to rotate it around a little bit in order to find just the right orientation for how I usually like to keep my tracker set up. Once we have our camera connected, last thing we need to do is we need to add a plane. This plane is going to actually have our camera's material instance that we created. And this is what's actually going to allow for us to appear in the Unreal Editor. Now, during this part, I usually like to go ahead and check the camera as well and just kind of test it to see if I have it all at the correct orientation and that the location is correct and that's all still visible from the camera that you find in game. So what I usually like to do is drop it into the scene and go ahead and just click on that camera and jump in front of the physical camera a few times just to make sure that everything fits pretty well. Now we will be back here later on to possess that pawn, but for now, let's go ahead and return back to the pawn's blueprint. And in here, we need to do one more thing. Jump into the event graph, and in here, we need to create a new variable called media player. And as you may have guessed, this needs to be of type media player. Once you compile and save the event graph, you should see in the media player variables details that there's now a drop down. We can use this to actually select the media player that we're using. In this case, I only have the one in this entire project, so it's obviously the only one that comes up. Then finally, in the event begin play, we need to grab this media player and we need to set its URL. Now, in case you don't know what the URL is, that's part of the reason why I've left the media player open this entire time. Aside from the fact that closing the media player will actually stop the camera stream, 
The media player asset also gives us this URL. If we click in the media player, we can actually see up top right next to this drop down arrow that we clicked at the beginning, there's a URL path here that links directly to the camera that we're using. So I'm going to go and copy that and I'm going to paste it into the URL. Once that's all done, you should now be able to simply auto set the auto possess and auto receive input on this pawn to player zero. And you should now be able to see yourself in front of your camera and be able to move it around using whatever tracker you've decided to use. And that's it. Now you have a camera, a tracker, and you're now able to make yourself appear in a Unreal Engine virtual world. Obviously this still needs some work. It's not that great, but I'll be doing even more work on this in the future as well. And I'll be updating it through tutorials. So if you enjoyed this video and want to see even more just like this one, be sure to like and subscribe button down below. And I also want to give a huge shout out to my Patreon supporters. And with that, I'll see you in the next reality.